exposure to the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Hello, folks. Welcome back to yet another edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments. I've done quite a few of these, and I must say, it's one of my favorite things to do. So I got my... Oh! Leaping lizards! I gotta go get some more coffee. I'll be right back. Just hang out there for a second. All right, all right, all right. We've got the Cuban coffee in the Bucky's cup. I will tell you something. Back in hmm, maybe 2013-ish, there was a a uh, Cuban fellow that I worked with and uh, he suggested pretty sure his name is Elio he suggested a you know uh, Cafe Bustelo or the Lave and uh, he showed me like a picture of a green coffee vacuum pack thing and a yellow and red uh, coffee vacuum pack package he's like Take, you know, one one thing of that and you'll be good. And I've been drinking it ever since. I just, uh, I made a coffee. <laughs> I made a coffee for my uh, dearest, uh, I guess, how would you call it? Uh, call her uh, stepdaughter, I guess. Made her a coffee the other night in... She texted me the next day saying, my God, what was in that coffee? Did you put crack in that coffee? <laughs> she was up all night cleaning her house. But we love Cuban coffee. Yes, we do. All right. So let's get into this. We got some choice comments to discuss here. This one comes from Shane Harrison, and they say, Corporation police turns understand. Do you stand under my authority? Bro, what does that even mean? I have no idea. But thanks for taking the time to write that out. Next comment comes from member and active commenter, AAAA, and they say, Hi, Jason. I hope you and your loved ones and friends and everyone else are doing well. I also have tried to talk to people about quantum grammar and contract language, maritime law, the fiction, and all that. The feedback I get from this is resistance and ad hominem attacks due to the fiction psychology people have, although I am not perfect myself regarding the psychology aspects. Okay, first and foremost, I know you've mentioned something like this before. Uh, a, 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 but here's the thing. If you don't have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you are never going to come off 
convincingly to someone who knows not, nothing about it. You're going to come off like someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. They're going to look at you like you're nuts, and they might make fun of you. That's just how it works. That's just, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, that's just the way people react to the unknown, especially something as incredible as this. That's why you have to know what you're talking about when you talk about it. More importantly, with regards to quantum grammar, it is critical to your success or even a chance of success that you know what you're talking about. Because if you talk about it and you have no idea what you're talking about or you don't have full closure, people that will pick up on that, they know, they'll start asking questions that you don't have the answer to. And you'd be like, I don't know. And then you might like pass off the, the to something, you know, say, hey, check out this YouTube channel or watch this video or blah, blah, blah. You're passing off an appeal to an authority or something like that. And then you come off even more unconvincing to them and maybe scare them away. So I learned early on before I got closure on the grammar not to talk about it to anybody. I just don't because it's a headache I don't want. And then after I got closure on it, I came to another conclusion that it's these types of things are not meant to be pushed on people. Okay? If I see someone that may be open to it or acts like, oh, you know, they they have a curiosity about the legal system or the fraud involved in it, then I might bring it up in little increments just to peculiar their curiosity. And then if they start asking questions, well, hell, I'm here to answer whatever you want to ask about it because that's what I do. But I don't ever like volunteer it. You know what I mean? Unless I'm in a, in a situation where I have to and there's a trespass being committed. Then I don't hesitate to lay the hammer down. But you see what I'm saying? You have to know what you're talking about. Otherwise, you're going to look crazy. How, how do you think the fiction system is able to have a reason to put these free men or living men or whatever you want to call them in jail? Or get them out of their, their venues. Because they come off as crazy. Because they don't know. They don't have closure on what they're talking about. Like the video. The reaction video I just did. About the sovereign citizen guy. Who had no clue what was going on. Had no clue about quantum grammar. Had no clue where his ship's papers were. He was appealing to authority. He, did, he checked the box on every possible thing you could do wrong. In a situation like that. And the cops probably think he's nuts. So, I mean, I mean, seriously, who cares what the cops think? But what I'm saying is in that situation, you have to have all your ducks in a row. Okay. The people seem to lack the willpower for certain knowledge and willing to study. Well, that's a possibility. Yeah, another possibility is maybe they're not interested. It's just simply not interested. And that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't have a reason to do something, why would you do it? It's possible that they don't uh, have the willpower or they just might just not care. And that's cool too. The people who are meant for this knowledge are as rare as you know. Yes, the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Please consider continuing your channel on YouTube. I have considered it and I've come up with a solution. I'm going to continue making members only videos. I'm going to continue putting out videos for the members only loyalist contributors section as well as doing some live streams but as far as the public section the 900 or so videos will stand they'll stay here i'm just not going to create any public content the people should be ashamed of themselves for not liking the video and act like a member a a a a i ask you know as a member and as a longtime viewer, please reread the terms and conditions of the comments field of this channel. I specifically say in the terms and conditions, please do not tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. That is a trespass. So telling someone they should be ashamed of themselves is just basically you projecting your personal opinion on someone else. And what, that you know better what they should or shouldn't do. 
that you have some kind of knowledge maybe that they don't or you're better than them in some way, shape, or form because you don't feel ashamed or whatever. You see what I'm saying? It's just weird and it's condescending and I understand that some people don't get it or it takes them a few times to get it. So I'm telling you again, please read the terms and conditions of this channel. Please don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. Your hard work is seen and appreciated by me and studied with love and dedication. Thank you very much, and I very much appreciate that sentiment. Is the TikTok platform that much better for your construct? Greets. Well, at this point in time, I get way more interaction and way more viewers when I do a live stream on TikTok than I do here on YouTube. So I guess the short answer would be yes. Next comment comes from Magic Fluid Process. And I know that this viewer has been around for quite a while also. And they ask, why are vowels non-tangible? Now, I know that Magic Fluid Process have been around for at least a year or so. Now, this is a perfect example, folks. And I'm not picking on Magical Fluid Process, whomever that may be. They, don't cho they choose not to use their correct name for whatever reason but I'm not picking on them I'm using them as an example of someone who has been on this channel for a significant amount of time they've watched a significant amount of videos and they're asking a question like this if you don't take workshops if you don't take don't take studying seriously this type of question if you started a year or two years ago, you will be asking the same type of question a year or two later because you're not progressing. Or if you're progressing, you're progressing like so minimally that it's, you can't even speak of it. It's so small, the increment of progression. Now, everybody has their own choice to learn at their own speed, of course. If you're not serious about it, you don't want to take workshops, you want to keep spinning your wheels and be in the same spot this time next year as you were last last year at this time, then that's what you get with an individual like this who has been a long time viewer. Why are vowels non-tangible? Such a basic, basic question, something that someone would learn within like the first three workshops, if they were to take workshops, they would learn this. They would know why, and they would know how to t uh, certify that. Which by the way, Magic Fluid Process, I am not gonna leave you hanging. Go ahead and check out my syntax playlist. Check out uh, closure and clarity or clarity and closure on two specific syntax scenarios, parts one and two. And that will give you full in-depth closure on answering your own question. Next question comes from longtime member, uh, I guess for the claimant. And they say, hello, Jason, hope you are well. All three of these men have played a part in my tuition. Ah, okay. He's talking about the poll that I posted in my community section, which is a very, very good knowledge cultivation section of the channel, for those of you interested in learning, where I posted a post where I did a poll where I said, who is the kindest and most knowledgeable man, in your opinion, in your perception, out of the three men, Colon David hyphen Wynn, colon Miller, colon Russell hyphen J, colon Gould, and colon Mark hyphen lowercase K, Kishon, colon Christopher, out of those three men. And then he says that all three of those men played a part in his tuition. I do not know any of them, so presumption of their volitions would be naive. That is not what I asked, however. I didn't ask about volition. If you read what I, said, what I wrote, I said, who in your perception is the most knowledgeable and the kindest out of those three in your perception meaning knowing what you know with the information you have whether you know them or you don't know them what is your perception that's what I'm asking however we never really know anybody as our understanding of another's personality and intention is always based in the past when I was growing up my family taught me values and principles of which I still carry to this day these values and principles taught me how to navigate people and where safest to invest my life. After watching hours of content from Mark Russell and David, there are mannerisms and behaviors I pick up on. To shorten my explanation, I often found both Mark and Russell, they both deliberately stimulate emotional weaknesses. 
and encourage large financial investments in services or products only they, Russell and Mark, can deliver in order to bring about a resolve or solution. I have to question that statement right there simply because I have never one time ever in the public ever witnessed Russell J. Gould uh, encouraging any type of financial investment in him, himself. I've never seen, in other words, I've never seen him ask for money. I've never seen him actually say, hey, I'm having a seminar on this day and it costs this much, blah, blah, blah. I've never seen him do that in the public on video. Maybe you have. I have never seen it. If you can point me to a link to a video of Russell J. Gould asking for money, meaning Russell J. Gould himself, with the words coming out of his mouth, asking for money or encouraging people to send him money, I would appreciate it. So I can uh, certify with the continuance of the evidence your, your claim here of your findings. Now, as far as Mark goes, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, while he doesn't outright ask for money, he does encourage. He does, you know, there are fees and things like that for what he does. And he makes no no bones about it. When I watched David, his seminars were different. His teaching method reminded me of both my father and grandfather. All right, well, oh, hold on, let's finish it. In that his lessons didn't give you all the answers, David would sometimes say things that wouldn't make sense until you looked into something for yourself. Then suddenly a realization would hit. All right, so as far as that goes, you know, going from a financial type of theme into David. I guess you're sort of implying that David didn't ask for money, which is not true at all. Because David, while he didn't ask for money, he would say things like, if you want me to write a quantum grammar trust, it's $5,000. He flat out said 200 bucks for his book. He made no bones about the fees for the things that he did, whether it was writing a trust, a quo or rento, whatever it was. He made no bones about it, which is not what Russell does. Russell does not ask for anything. Interesting dichotomy there. David left breadcrumbs that lead me down numerous paths of study. Those studies were not just correct sentence structure. However, those studies would eventually give me greater understanding. David's seminars also made me laugh. He had charisma, humor, and dealt with people respectfully. No doubt about it. He was the most charismatic individual I've ever personally spoken with, ever. Uh, when I would speak with him and hear his voice on the phone, the, charisma, the charisma came through. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it was like, for me, back in 2017, 2018, it was like talking to a rock star. Really, it was, for me. And, if, and a funny thing about it is, and I learned this later on, but at the time, like I attended a couple webinars that David was a part of, like live webinar where David was there answering questions. You could personally talk to him through video with a bunch of other people and uh, people would ask him questions and it was like, man, that guy can't be stumped. He has an answer for everything. And later on down the line, the more that I learned I found that when some, if someone would ask him a question that he didn't know the answer to, he would go off on like a 10 or 15 minute dissertation on this, that, and the third, a lot of it having nothing to do with the question. He would never answer the question. Perfect example. In a seminar back in 20, early 2018 that both myself and my tutor, Colin Raven, Ivan Farad, Ivan Tohidi, Colin Afarin, were a part of with Mark Lowercase K, Kishon Christopher, and a number of other people, um, Raven asked David, do you, uh, to paraphrase, do you know how many live life claimants there are, or do you have a way to keep track of that? And David went off on this, I don't even know what, but he was talking about how many hits he gets on his website, millions and millions, and there are 
10 billion people on planet Earth and 5 billion of those are his students. And Which means if you walk out the door, one out of every two people that you run into are going to be a David Wynn Miller student, right? If there are 10 billion people on planet Earth and 5 billion of them are his students, based upon his website hits. Anyways, and then when he was done, Mark Lowercase K says, oh, did that answer your question? And Raven said, that was some beautiful information there, some beautiful knowledge, but you didn't answer the question. I didn't hear a clear answer. And then David was like, well, when you ask me a question, you better get your notebook out because I'm going to be giving you a, I'm going to be giving you information that's around it and blah, 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 inside it, outside it, beside it, blah, blah, blah. And he went off again. Raven and I kind of laughed about it later. He could have just said no. <laughs> he could have just said, no, I don't have a way to, to, to track that. But he didn't. So anyways, that's a personal story uh, that I was a witness to and part of. Your playlists have been a wonderful contribution and help to me. Very grateful for your investment also. Wish you all the best in reaching your subscription goal by the end of December. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, 6,000 subscribers by January 1st, 2024 is the goal. If not, the YouTube channel is uh, shut down. The public part of it. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts... This was this claim of the gratitude with the broadcast of the YouTube page Vessel, Jason Matthew, with the scribe performance of this comment, with the maintenance of the peace and of the neutrality, with this correct sentence structure performance by the claimant. Well done, James. Stellar, stellar sentence right there. Love it. Love to see your progress. And this is an example of an individual who has not taken a workshop, but does take his studies very seriously. And his improvements and his leaps and bounds in learning are evident every time he writes a sentence like that. Well done. Very proud. Thank you. Here's another comment on the same post. They said, who else but him master? And that's from Extra Mundo Taro, who's a member. Thank you for your membership. Thank you for the comment. And I can only guess that they mean Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. Who else but him master? That's a guess on my part, though. Which, if I were to pick someone out of that poll, I would definitely pick David Wynn Miller. Next comment comes from Galaxy 13 user, and they say, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with location of the collected 50 territories with the people of the joinder with the performance by the claimants and contract parties, period. How is this in brackets? Well, it's a very good effort, that's for sure, but it is not correct sentence structure. And I can tell you one, one reason why is because you're missing a lodial between with and location, which throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. The positional sequencing is correct. You have put a past tense particle of negation in your fact with collected. The ED is a particle of negation. That's a no contract word, so that's another mistake. And then your use of the apostrophe in claimants is incorrect. I don't even think you need an apostrophe if that's where you're going with this. Um, and also then that would make the apostrophe in claimants knowledge incorrect as well. If there is more than one person being attributed to the authority of the claim, then the apostrophe would come after the S in claimant's knowledge because you would have more than one claimant, but still one knowledge. And then the same would come at the end. The apostrophe, actually you wouldn't need, again, at the end there, you wouldn't need an apostrophe in there if that's where you're going with this. 
So, very good effort. Close, but no cigar. Thank you. Next comment comes from Terrence Herming. And they say, is the colon tilde and the full stop at the end of part of Jason's email, please? As I've mentioned recently in videos, have you ever seen an email address in the fiction that started with a colon and a tilde and ended with a period? Ever in life, out of all the emails that we deal with, have you ever, ever seen that? I'm going to guess the answer is no. So that answer applies to your question here. Just like other sentences, other things in correct sentence structure, it's different than the fiction. In the fiction, it would just be jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I say it out loud. You don't hear me say colon tilde jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com full stop. You never hear me say that. You just hear me say jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. So there you go. There's your answer. Next comment comes from Q McCall, and they say, Hi, Jason. I am a little confused. The way I would have read this sentence is, we the people, as the first part, so that would be a 412, then the second part of the United States, would be, which would be a 4134, which is what you put initially. Well, yes, but you see, there is no break in the continuance of the evidence. So there has to be either a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb situation in order for a new syntax scenario to start. Many times that, that is what has to happen. It's either a break in the continuance of the evidence or some sort of adverb situation in order for to, to separate the syntax scenarios. And in We the People of the United States, there is no break in the continuance of the evidence there. However, there are adverb situations. My question is, is it possible to have more than one syntax scenario for the same sentence? The answer to that is yes, but yet that usually only involves a conjunction. Like if you would say, the black and blue, period. The black and blue, period. That could be a 1304, or I would say, the way I would syntax it would be a 1202 dangling participle verb. The black and blue, adverb, verb, conjunction, dangling participle verb. That's how I would syntax it. But if someone syntax it, adverb, adjective, conjunction, pronoun, I wouldn't argue that. It just depends upon you and those scenarios and your knowledge level and what makes sense to you and can you convey that sense to another contract party and back it up with a continuance of the evidence. You have to be able to explain what you're doing. So the answer to your question is yes, but not in the scenario that you're presenting in your comment. That scenario would only be syntaxed one way. Next comment comes from Tin Rib Music member. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, for this claimant sensation of the cognition is with this claim of the facts, with this concur of the tutor's claim, Hmm. I would have put the Jason hyphen Matthew before the word tutor with a comma. With the possibility of any person vessel, there is no need to sick any. Any is fine as a lodial. With the person vessels make of the wrong grammar performance, with the sensation knowledge by this claimant. For this claimant of the sensation knowledge is with the wrong grammar performance of the person's vessel make, with any person vessel of the possibility, with the tutor's claim of this concur with the facts. <clears throat> That's an interesting sentence. Positional sequencing is excellent. I'm trying to figure out, going backwards, the claimant 
Jonathan is the is the cause, and it's concerned with the sensation and knowledge. And what's possessing the sensation and knowledge? The wrong grammar for performance. Okay, and what's that concerned with? The person vessels make. Who's the person vessel? Who's possessing that? The person vessel. And what's that concerned with? The possibility. And who's possessing the possibility? The tutor's claim. And what's the tutor's claim concerned with? An agreement, a concurrence. And what's possessing the concurrence? The facts. So you have a couple claims going on there. You have the claimant's claim, Jonathan, and then you have the tutor's claim, the Jason Matthews. But what's... Hold on. Okay, this sentence, uh, I see now what, what's going on here. Excellent attempt. Excellent attempt. It does make sense after a couple readings, but one would continue working on it, whittle it down. I personally would adjust it, correct it to its simplest form so that I only have to read it once to understand what's going on, what's being claimed, who's making the claim, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But excellent job. Keep working, man. I agree. We all make mistakes. For me, it would be a pain in the arse horror knowing the maintenance of the mistakes correction balance is not recognized by the wrong psyche. People of the darkness whose focus... Who is focus? I think you mean W-O-S-E, focus, is only with the mistake and not with the correction. Okay. Yes, and I'll bring this up. Um, everyone makes mistakes. Like, there's another comment that's not in this video, but you can check it out on the YouTube channel, where this same individual says that I was, I had something written on the dry erase board here, but what came, I was reading it, but what came out of my mouth did not match what was on the board. Now, I was not aware of this as I was speaking, because we as humans make errors. And you have to have a balance of honor and grace to be able to, I guess, accommodate that or be considerate of that. And there are lots of, there's no shortage of people out there who, if they see me make a mistake, will like jump on me like vultures and try and pick me apart. And well, what about this? You made a mistake here. You put an extra space there. It looks like, you misspelled this word. And it's, I understand some of them, most of them, thankfully, have positive performance volition. But I can guarantee that none of them have closure on the grammar, <laughs> except for maybe one. Except for maybe one. They don't have closure on the grammar. But I mean, you don't have to have closure on the grammar to be able to point out an inconsistency in spacing or spelling or things like that, or speaking. But it's always good to maintain a balance of honor and grace in these scenarios, which I do take into account, especially when I audit people like colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould and colon Mark hyphen lowercase K Kishon Christopher. Are these typos that they are making or are they volitional conscious mistakes? Meaning, are these people making these consistent, the same mistakes over and over and over again because they just, their fingers fumbled and they did a typo? Or is it what they really meant to put on the paper? And I find with those, these folks, it's what they really meant to put on the paper because either they don't know any better or they do know better and they're making these things on mistakes on purpose to lead people the wrong way. It's one of those two. I tend to think I lean towards more towards the former. Grammar queries. Apologies if within one of the 600 videos I have missed or not watched yet. So if they've watched 600 videos, or if they have not watched 600 videos, then that means 
that they have watched 300 videos because I have about 900 videos on this channel. If they would do their research, they would see this. So that's an impressive thing in and of itself that you have watched 300 of my videos. Thank you. Are person, vessel, and any in my sentence of the correct word term OIT Jason? Um, I ask that if you're going to communicate in brackets, just use plain, simple English. Don't try and mix quantum gobbledygook with plain, simple English. Just use plain, simple English to the best of your knowledge or use correct sentence structure with the best of your knowledge, but please do not mix them. It just makes it easier for me. I'm an old man, bro, so the more efficient, the better. So as, uh, as far as your question goes, there's nothing wrong with the word any. I use it as a lodial. And person vessel, I don't see why. I mean, I don't see any particles of negation. Have you parsed those words? Person and vessel, do you see any particles of negation in them? I don't see any particles of negation. Number two, for grammar mechanics, would you agree that the positionals are for, of, with, and by only? Again, to go back to what I was saying about the magic fluid process user, if you take workshops with me, you would know the answer to this question within the, like, the first three workshops. And I've said this multiple times. There are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. For is cause of concern with possessive by authority. Four positionals, four positionals only. If you see someone using more than four positionals, then that means they have brought something else into the mathematical interface. Something other than the cause, concern, possessive authority. There's now another one. Because there is only one cause, one concern, one possessive, one authority. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. One and one is one. So if you're going to bring in another lodial like out or in, I'm sorry, not lodial. See, mistakes, misspeaking. Another positional like out or in or within, now you have to create another function because within or out or in or whatever or on cannot be a cause, cannot be a concern, cannot be a possessive, cannot be an authority. It has to be something else because we already have for as the cause, of as the concern, with as the possessive, and by as the authority. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why there are only four positionals, which I have said ad nauseum if you watch my correct sentence structure playlist. For grammar mechanics, can any other lodials be used extra to A and the, this, uh, yeah, you can use whatever lodial you want if you know what a lodial is. Again, if you were to take workshops, you would know this. And also the answer would be in my correct sentence structure playlist where I specifically talk about lodials and what can and cannot be a lodial. You can get a sense of uh, what a lodial is. Is that void due to being an adjective pronoun? I never said that that was void. Uh, I don't think I've ever said that. I don't know if I've ever used that as a lodial, but I don't see why it wouldn't be used as a lodial. It's not being used as a fact. It's being used as a lodial. So, For clarification of the tangibility with position lodial words in a 567 construct, how would you convey how of, a, all, any are exempt from the single vowel, vowel followed by a consonant rule? Again, this would become apparent to you within the first three workshops if you were to take workshops with me. It's just an investment on your end, uh, how serious you are with it. You seem to be pretty serious about it. So outside of doing the workshops, which I think you said you can't do right now, I would study all of the videos in my correct sentence structure playlist where I do answer that very question multiple times. Very short, and I just actually answered it in the with your prior question. Lodials and positionals are lodials and positionals. They are not facts, okay? We don't use particles of negation in our facts. 
Facts are positive performance. Facts are not loyals or positionals. I hope that helps you on your journey, but I would study, take more time on your part and study the correct sentence structure playlist for full closure on that. Or, you know, when you're ready, go ahead and sign up for the workshops. Is using claimant sensation a correct choice with a single sentence so that knowledge is established? Uh, I don't see how claimant sensation establishes knowledge. I don't see the correlation there. Uh, whatever you feel is correct for your construct is what you would do. How you would create a correct sentence structure. Okay. After you get full closure on the grammar, and again, going back, I keep going back to the workshops. After you would gain closure on correct sentence structure, and I would see that in the process of taking the workshops, then things like this, how to format your claims and how to format document contract postal vessel court venues in the most efficient way using correct sentence structure, that would then be discussed. But closure on the grammar must come first which you obviously don't have if you're asking questions about such as these about lodials and about person vessel and things like that you got a little bit more studying to do last one for the sentence constructs of metaphysical phenomenon would it be okay to write something like for one's cognition of this conception is with this claim this is a psyche challenge with a subjective thought logic of self-governance autonomy being conveyed into objective writing you can't, I don't, how can you convey something subjective objectively? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I know what you're asking me. And I did answer in the comments field. And I'll answer again here, but using a different, slightly different angle. You can write in a generalized sense, for one's cognition of this conception is with this claim of the blah, 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 blah. You can do that. But you're taking authority off of yourself and putting it on somewhere else. You're putting it on one. You see what I'm saying? If you're giving what your perception is of something, then you could say something like, for the claimant sensation of the cognition is with the claimant's knowledge of the facts, with the claim of the perception, with the blah, blah, blah. That's how you could do that in one single sentence. Hope that helps. Perhaps this may be a debate for a confidential do domain. Oh, there is no debate where the facts are present. There is no debate. That's why you always see people arguing about politics and religion and UFOs and the shape of the earth and things like that, because it's all opinion. When there's a fact, there is no debate. There is no argument. That's why I love correct sentence structure. All improvements, public scrutiny, and corrections are welcomed by the student. And I'm happy to provide them. Thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Next comment comes from Epic Lights. And they are also a member. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, hi, Jason. Thank you for your generosity of both your time and knowledge. This is greatly appreciated. You may have covered these subjects before, so I may humbly ask. The use of our name initials, such as colon A hyphen B colon space C, would that qualify as quantum grammar construct? Initials, as you know, begins with a vowel in, and the word anagram also begins with a vowel. What? Initials, as you know, begins with a vowel in. Oh, the word initials. When I'm teaching correct sentence structure, I'm using plain, simple English, okay? If, I, if, if you were to learn, say, for example, Russian, all right, would you learn from someone who only spoke Russian? Taking for granted that you don't know Russian and you want to learn it, you only speak English, would you be able to learn it from someone who only spoke Russian to you? Probably not. You probably have a really difficult time. So what has to happen is there has to be a medium there. If someone knows a language, if they know Russian, then they have to teach it to you using plain English. 
They have to know both Russian and plain English so that they can explain the mechanics of the grammar to you. So that's what I'm saying, we're doing when I'm using, when I say the word initial, okay? I'm using a plain, simple English term to convey what the colon A hyphen B colon space C is. You understand? That's like using the word adjective or adverb. That's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. But you see what I've done, I've sicked it. Because instead of coming up with an entirely new word to replace adjective or to, to replace adverb, why? Why? The word's already there. I know it's incorrect. It was created by an incorrect system. So I just sick it. But we try to be as correct as we possibly can with correct sentence structure. Not plain English, correct sentence structure. David often uses these sentences as an example to demonstrate quantum grammar for the bridge is over the water, for the water is under the bridge. How can we write those sentences in correct quantum grammar? Well, epic lights. I have done an entire whole ass video on that sentence itself. That sentence itself is a great teaching tool, but it is not correct. Because if you would read for the bridge is over the water backwards, it would be under the water is by the bridge. For the water is under the bridge. Over the bridge is by the water. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. And over and under are not correct positionals. And you would never have only one position lodial fact phrase before the verb or after the verb. You have to have at least two position lodial fact phrases before the verb because you must have two points in which to draw a straight line for the facts of the facts. Then you put your verb in and then you go into your possessive and your authority or your possessive, your concern, your possessive and your authority. So yes, just look up that video for the bridges over the water on my YouTube channel and it will give you all the closure you want in depth on that particular sentence. It's at least three years old, that video. Next comment comes from Dharma Science Radio and they say, at 8.22, you are reading backwards the finite meaning of the piece. And this has me wondering about the use of or and the use of two with statements back to back separated only by this or, as I thought this would disrupt the math language interface. Am I simply missing that both and and or are conjunctions so that those two with statements are counted as one? As I spoke, as I said to the Tin Rib Music individual and also the magic fluid process user, you would get closure on this within like the first three or four workshops if you were to take workshops with me. Other than that, I have done numerous videos about the use of the conjunctions or an and. You have essentially actually answered both of your, answered your question in your own comment. I'll lead you to discover what that answer is. Long story short, use of a conjunction correctly in correct sentence structure does not void the mathematical interface because conjunctions are neutral. That's why they're given the numerical value of zero. Next comment, series of comments. One of them is from Conundrum and they say, you have entered the twilight zone. Oh, cool. And then Marciala, they say way too much talking. And if you see here, it says view reply. I just corrected the T-O in, in that individual's comment. It should be T-O-O. -O. That's what I'm talking about. You know, people, folks these days don't even have a grasp of plain, simple English. It's just, just not there. The spelling and plain English grammar is horrendous these days. Harris Diz says, how can one be sovereign and a citizen? And my answer to that was, you can't. Not, not in a correct sense, anyways. In an imaginary sense, you could be, I suppose. In La La Land, the learner 100 or 1000 says, this is a great example, Jason. It's very embarrassing and dangerous. Well, I mean, embarrassment is 
the condition and state of mind of someone who lacks humility, from my experience. If you're humble, you'll never be embarrassed. Keep that in mind. Another comment from AAAA, and they say, I have the book, imported it from Portugal on this year, 2023, which means he got it from Colon Leon, Leonardo Colon Edwards, someone who fancies himself as some sort of a teacher with this grammar. But as I have shown in other videos, in reaction videos in the Coral Blade Grotto broadcast, uh, Leonardo definitely does not have closure on the grammar because there are mistakes all over his syntaxing and also his grammar. But I mean, that's not to put a knock on Leonardo. That's just to point out, be very careful uh, vetting your those people that you honor with the position of teacher. Can you name any examples of the possible modification we could compare the pages? And as I responded back to them with my Kuliana, what is the point of looking at modification when there are already multiple, multiple errors, grammatical errors on every single page of that book? It doesn't really matter, at least not to me. It's not important enough to me to look at. I just look at the book as a cool historical document which can give an advanced user of correct sentence structure cool ideas for formatting documents. But as far as teaching grammar, not so much. And the last comment, we get into the whole soft sit thing. Says, How can one be a sovereign and a citizen? One can't, it's an oxymoron, but there is a sovereign citizen movement whose members are referred to as sovereign citizens. A citizen who feels they are above the laws established by the system sovereign as in they follow their own laws, except for the Constitution, of course, they seem to follow that with an exception to the Tenth Amendment, times three. My response actually came before these two responses. As you can see, it says 13 hours ago, 11 hours ago, 6 hours ago. I said, to be a sovereign means you are a ruling authority and produce your own money, fuel, food, and have physical land that you can hold against any enemy that you may try to, that may try to attack and take it from you. A citizen is an individual who is subordinate to a ruling authority. Big difference. So there is no such thing as a sovereign citizen, literally, if you look up the meanings of those words. And then I said, I mean, there are some folks who identify as kitties and toasters and other delusional concepts, no different than the soft sit, which I'm being a little cheeky there, but it's true. I mean, you can, if you want to be a soft sit, you can be a soft sit, if that's what floats your boat. And then Frank W. says, go tell the founders of the sovereign citizen movement. It is their term to describe themselves, their ideology and their followers. And then I say, it's none of my business if someone chooses to participate with the delusion. I'm busy with more practical manners, but thank you for the suggestion. Because he told me to go tell the founders of the soft sit movement. That's like, I mean, that's so goofy. For someone to come into the comments field and say that, that'd be like saying, go tell the people in the end power movement that their, the title of their movement means no power. What's the point, bro? So facts don't matter to you. Figures. And then I say, LOL, what fact is that? The fact of the soft set delusion? Apologies if cold hard reality gave you a little shock. This is correct sentence structure channel. Not a delusional soft set worship fest. Go back to the comfort of your imaginary land of make-believe and leave the facts to the people who have closure on correct sentence structure. Walk the plank, sir. Which, by the way, I did not. Uh, I did not block Frank W seven oh nine. I was waiting to see what his Kuliana would be, but maybe he voluntarily walked the plank. Which, kudos to him. If sorry, if Frank is a male, uh, apologies to Frank if they are not a male. If they are female, then accept accept 
my humble apologies for misgendering you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.